So the plan for this lecture is um, uh, really two different things. One is uh, use the uh, uh, this uh, d to d minus p trick <coughs> to deduce uh, the uh, uh, the main the the first part of Riemann rock. <coughs> So, uh, you know, I explained this last time. <coughs> There's this trick of going, if I go from D minus P up to L of D, then either this is equality, either the inclusion is equality, <coughs> or dimension is, um, <coughs> or the dimension increases by exactly one. <coughs> so we use this many, uh, again and again, many, many times. <coughs> and so starting off from some big linear system, I, can, I start subtracting off points, and eventually I prove the, uh, this first part of Riemann rock uh, for, all, for all divisors and get some indications of when equality really holds. And then the second part is to give a, to give a treatment of the canonical class in some cases and get, uh, and hence, the full form of Riemann rock. <coughs> Okay, so, uh, uh, so as I explained, uh, the, the situation we have is that uh, uh, I, I've, I've established these two sort of, you know, primary uh, starting points for the theory. One is that for all f in uh, k of c, not zero, uh, the divisor of f has degree zero. Right, so that's the uh, that's the statement we we just proved, and uh, secondly, there is this sequence d m of divisors with the degree as large as you like, the degree d m going to infinity, <coughs> and uh, this number. Uh, so degree of dm minus L of dm uh, remains bounded. So remains bounded means it's less than or equal to some constant. So, so the dm is going to infinity, it's going, uh, is getting bigger, as big as we like, whereas this difference is uh, forced to remain bounded. <coughs> so we, you know, we saw, we saw in fact, uh, m times h, h, the hyperplane section, has um, <coughs> uh, th this guy here has um, degree m times d. and um, L of MD. <coughs> equals, no, uh, greater than or equal to uh, MD plus a constant. Right, so, so this just comes from the, uh, from the Hilbert series. Right. So, so this proves this proves the two, the, the two, but we don't really need this specific form. It will be quite enough to have to have this. Okay. So, um, <coughs> so.
so um, <clears throat> uh, the, 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 dim the dimension uh, L, uh, L of D um, or L of DM let's say let, let's let, let's say l of d uh, only depends on on d up to linear equivalence right and so this was an exercise on the worksheet so you're supposed to have, have done this if i have uh, D minus if, if D is twiddles uh, D is linearly equivalent to D primed. It means that D is uh, D primed plus the divisor of G, right? And then multiplication by G takes you from L of D to L of D primed. <coughs> uh, I hope I've got that the right way around. <coughs> so if I take something in D. Uh, a divisor of f plus d greater than zero infinitely divisor of fg plus d minus divisor of g. <coughs> right. So this this guy is d prime. So multiplication by G takes you from uh, LD into LD prime. <coughs> so, so if uh, if DM uh, if this DM has uh, LM L of DM large, I can do DM and then DM minus a point and then dm minus two points and so on and these are still large these are still they still have this bound right because when I go from dm to dm minus p I lose either I lose one or I don't lose anything right so when I do this I do this many times so if I have this if I have a bound here for this sequence of dm's, then I get it also for any other divisor that, that can be obtained from dm. <coughs> right. So uh, so let's choose one choose one constant like this. So choose a constant such, such that uh, degree of L d degree of dm minus l of dm. Is, is bounded right this constant is more or less a genus but uh, choose a constant C <coughs> uh, right for this for this uh, for the infinite sequence even in two so I claim that uh, I claim that also I claim that um, degree of D minus L of D is less than or equal to C for all D. Right, so I, had to, I start off with some special family of DM that have this, uh, you know, this good growth. So this is saying that the L of D grows uh, uh, in a healthy way. And if it, I, I only know this for this sequence of numbers, then I get it for all. So the proof is, uh, so because, so there are two points here. That uh, um, there exists an M such that L of D M minus D is not zero. Right, so, so for this, so because to pro proof, um, if I write D is sum of PI minus sum of QI, right, this is positive part, and this is negative, I don't care, I don't care how, how big either of these are, 
Right? And I, uh, here, I allow that, allow repetitions. Right? So just choose, choose M such that. So I'm choosing M such that L of dM is greater than, so in a, let, let me just fix some numbers here. This is 1 up to R. And this is something I don't care. Right. Choose this so uh, this is bigger than R plus 1. Right. Then I do dM minus P1, dM minus P2, and so on, dM minus, sorry, P1 minus P2, and then P1 minus PR. So I just choose, I just continue, continuously do this subtraction thing. Right, so I start off from L of dm, and then I get L of dm greater than or equal to L of dm minus 1, and then greater than or equal to L of dm minus 2, and so on. So, so this number here is this L of this space, dm minus p1 minus pr, has dimension greater than or equal to L of dm minus r. Right? And I, just, I chose this to be positive. Right, so this means I can find some g in L of dm minus d. Right? I, I, I've, I've arranged for this dm here. I, I've arranged to move this dm so that it's bigger than this positive part, and then I don't care about the negative part. Right? And so then I, I, I just replace, if I replace dm, replace by uh, linearly equivalent to dm plus divisor of g, then this thing here is bigger than dm. Right, so this means that dm plus divisor of g is equal to d plus e with e uh, an effective divisor. Right, and I'm just going to play the same trick again. So e is, this means that e is sum of, uh, you know, pi primed, i equals 1 up to, I don't care, some number r. Right, and so, so L of this guy plus divisor of g, so this is just the, this is just the point I made here, this is some divisor linearly equivalent to d. So this is uh, isomorphic to L of dm. Right, and this contains, so let me call this d, dm prime. This contains L of dm primed uh, minus p1, and then, you know, minus p1 minus p2, and so on. And then eventually, sorry, and eventually uh, L of dm minus dm prime minus e. Right? So, so, um, you know, as far as this guy is concerned, as far as the original L of dm primed is concerned, this has, um, this, this thing here has degree of dm primed minus L of dm primed is bounded by this constant, that's just the assumption. Right? Now, each time we go down a step, the degree decreases by 1. So at each step, at each step, uh, you know, when I'm doing minus pi, the degree drops by 1, goes down by 1, and the, uh, the L uh, goes down by 1 or by 0. Right, so the conclusion is 
I, I, I'm doing this this number of times, the degree of e times, and so the the conclusion is that uh, this guy here, L of d prime minus m, but d prime minus m is just d, L of d. Uh, so if I do, the conclusion is that degree of degree of d minus L of d is greater than or equal to the same constant. Right, because I've obtained d, I've obtained d by start taking this dm primed and subtracting off these points one at a time. Right, each time I subtract off a point, the degree definitely decreases by one, and the dimension of the vector space decreases by at most one. So if I start off greater than with this difference, I'm sorry. If I start off with this, if I start off with this uh, with this thing here, bigger than So um, L of dm prime greater than or equal to uh, degree of dm prime minus constant c. So I'm, I'm going down to L of of d, which is um, which is we know is greater than or equal to L of dm prime minus r. Right, I've gone down r steps, and each step I've either gone down by one or I've gone down by zero. Right, and then this is greater than or equal to the same thing. Right, so uh, so the, the, uh, the consequence of this is so define g to be that's either going to be the max or the minimum, and I can't remember which. Uh, degree of d minus. L of D plus one. <coughs> uh, so I'm going to write max or mi min or max there when I've thought about it, right? And so then, uh, then, then by then, then the point is that this, these are these numbers are bounded. So if I take max, if I take max of this, then uh, this is some number less than infinity. And then by con by construction, L of D greater than or equal to 1 minus g plus degree d. Right? So, uh, so, so, so the point is we want to know that this Ld is at least the degree of d minus a constant. So we start off by knowing this for all of these devices in, the, in, in dm and then we get the same for all devices with the same constant c. So there I wasn't specific about what, the, what name the constant was going to get. Right? So I just defined g in such a way that this is true, and if I replace g by a smaller number, then it would no longer be true. So I think that's, uh, that's max. I hope it's max. Right? So, uh, um, you know, if I, if I made this g bigger, then this inequality would still be true. So I've chosen the g to be the smallest, so this equality is always true, and that, that means it's the maximum of these numbers. Right, and equality holds sometimes. Right, because that, that's what max means. Uh, Okay, so it's uh, so so far. It's this is this is just a cheap trick to avoid telling you what the genus really is. So I claim that uh, I claim that actually uh, there exists divisors 
of degree of degree g with uh, L of d uh, equals um, one. Right. So in other words, it is possible to get equality here, and it's possible to do it, so i.e. equality in this inequality. Right, and the second claim. is that then for all divisors d of degree greater than or equal to 2g minus 1 necessarily uh, L of d equals 1 minus g plus degree d. Right, so uh, you know, I'm I'm not really doing anything. I'm just narrowing down where the where the possible ambiguity could be, where the uh, where this failure could be, where, where this equality where this inequality could be straight. Right, so proof. Uh, so we know we know that uh, L of D equals. 1 minus g plus degree d for some d. And I want this, uh, I want this d to be uh, I don't want it to be 0. So if, uh, if L of D is greater than 1, is greater than or equal to 2, then I claim I can find some point P with L of D contains L of D minus p, where this is a strict inequality, where this is a strict inclusion, right? So this is, um, so, so let's just think about this. L of d is some vector space. So this is in, inside k of c. So this is the set of f, f in k of c, non-zero, such that the divisor of f plus d is greater than or equal to zero. Mm. Right, so, so this is some divisor. This is some d prime. <coughs> this is some d prime. And it's an effective divisor. So this d prime is some sum of, um, you know, pi. Uh, a fi finite sum, i equals 1 up to degree of d prime. Right, so if I choose, choose, choose some point q in c, q not equal to the pi's, right, then it means that uh, this is, so I've chosen, I, I'm choosing a point which is not a base point. So this means that uh, this means that that f is in uh, L of d prime, and f is not in L of d d prime minus q. Right. So, so we had this discussion also last time when I discussed this, uh, what it means for 
L of, D, uh, L of D minus P to be equal to L of D. Right? So this is a, this is a, a certain space of functions with allowed pole. This is the same space of functions, but I've just allowed one fewer pole. Right? So equality here, equality here means that uh, there's no function here that has pole exactly right at P. Right? So here I've chosen this D prime here. This D prime is some given space of, uh, of sections F. Uh, so, sorry, the D prime is some given effective divisor. So if I choose a point P which is not in that effective divisor, then taking, uh, taking sections here and demanding that they vanish at Q, although they have pole, uh, that, that they vanish at Q, so this is, uh, this is now L of D prime. This is now the set of G in such that G of Q is not zero. Right? And so I've, I've just chosen a general point in, I've ch chosen some point P which is not one of the given zeros of this F. And then, um, and so that, so, so this means that, um, so the, the, the guy F there, F had exactly, if I took the divisor of F plus D to get this D primed, he has exactly this QI. So if I take minus QI, then this F does not satisfy that condition. Right, so I can decrease. I can decrease uh, degree D down by one, and at the same time L of D down by one. Uh, yeah, L of D down by one. So in the argument so far, I was saying this, de this, in the argument that was going on here, each step I was saying the, de de the de degree decreases by one and the L of D decreases by at most one. And so this difference, this difference between the two things can only, uh, can only increase. Here I'm saying I can arrange for, I can choose the point Q to be a general point of the curve, a point not equal to one of these PIs. And then I can guarantee that the space actually decreases. So um, uh, the condition that, so the assumption, the assumption that uh, equality holds for D means also, means also it holds for D minus Q. Right? So if I, have, if I have equality here for some given divisor D, I can subtract off points to D and uh, guarantee uh, to arrange for this thing to be exactly one. Right. And so the second part is just the same. I'm just repeating the same argument again and again. So now uh, for claim two, for proof of claim two. Mm. Uh, so let me uh, let E be of degree G and L of D, L of E equals one as in claim one. So I, I just want to, I just want to use the word E, the letter E instead of this D. Right, and now given any, given any, given any D of degree greater than or equal to 2G minus one, then D minus E has degree, has degree greater than, greater than or equal to, well, it's bigger than that, so it's G minus one. <coughs> uh,
don't want to argue by contradiction. I want to argue directly. Uh, if d is divisor at degree greater than 2g minus 1, I want to subtract off this d. I want to go down from d. I want to say that this is effective. So given d of degree 2g minus 1, then L of d is greater than or equal to, just using the inequality part, 1 minus g plus 2g minus 1. Right, and I think we know how to do this sum. This is uh, equal to g. So if equality holds, there's nothing to prove. Right? Don't worry, then, then we're okay. So the, the proof of claim two says that uh, we actually have equality. So if equality holds, there's nothing to prove. So otherwise, in the other ca in the in the other case, otherwise L of D is greater than or equal is greater than or equal to g plus one. Then, then uh, L of d minus e is non-empty. Right. So why is this? Well, this e is effective. And so e is the sum of points, which I can call uh, you know q, q q one up to q g. Right, and I'm subtracting off these points one at a time, and I'm uh, and so on. Uh, this is um, d minus q1 minus q2 minus qg. So I'm subtracting off the points uh, one by one. Right, and so I start off with something which is greater than g plus one, and I end up with something which is uh, g. And so therefore, uh, d, uh, d minus e is linearly equivalent to an effective divisor. Right? So this means I can subtract off the points of this divisor, so I can go from D down to E. I can, I can do by subtracting off. The points of an effective divisor. So at the end, I, I'm, uh, let me let, let me let me sketch let, let, let me let me let me not say this in great detail because uh, it's possibly slightly wrong and uh, in any case it's not it's just a repetition of the same argument. So at each uh, at the end uh, we get uh, L of E equals one minus g plus degree of E. This is just one equals one minus g plus g. Right, and so and so if if I started off with L of d too big, then after I go down the, each of these steps, at the end I still get something too big, and that's a contradiction. So uh, uh, so uh, 
also L of D equals 1 minus G plus degree, degree of D. Right. So you'll notice a sort of basically remarkable thing that I managed to tell you this without telling you anything at all about the genus. The genus is just defined to be uh, the, uh, the, um, you know, the, the, sm the smallest constant here that will work. This, uh, sorry, the, the, um, the maximum of, this, of the constants that will uh, t tell you how, how this uh, difference is. Okay, so, so from now on I have to start telling you what the Connaught constant is. So there's the third main fact, and this is the, this is the, you know, the... So I told you, uh, my argument, the argument I'm giving here, and all proofs of riemann rock for curves, uh, just use the, t the two facts I said, one and two earlier, and they use this fact. So there exists a divisor Kc with uh, degree of Kc equals 2g minus 2. So g is g as in the earlier definition. And L of g, L of Kc equals g. Right? And so this is strictly bigger than 1 minus g plus 2g minus 2. So I made this sort of quite, you know, stupid little definition here, very, very formal definition of, uh, of the genus as being the maximum of, uh, uh, <coughs> the maximum of this difference, the maximum discrepancy between L of d and degree in d plus 1. Right? And so this, uh, th this is just... Um, you know, just a very formal argument and doesn't tell you anything about what the genus is. So then we find that we get this inequality and actually equality holds for every d greater than 2g minus 1. So we're in this position where we don't really understand what g is, but we do know that whenever we get greater than 2g minus 1, then I get equality in this, uh, in this formula. Right? And then the final point is that if I go down from 2g minus 1 to 2g minus 2, then it's not true. There is at least one divisor, exactly one divisor class, uh, for, which, uh, for which I get strict inequality, i.e. Um, I equality holds for all divisors of degree greater than or equal to 2g minus 1 and strict inequality holds for some divisor of degree 2g minus 2. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, this is the this is the main the main uh, thing that has to be still has to be proved. So let me explain now how you how you get the whole of the rest of the room and rock from, from this. So the, the uh, so assume assume the main fact. Right, then I've got this guy, Kc. And so if I do, let's, let's first of all consider Kc plus P. So L of Kc is G, but this guy here has got degree greater than or equal to 2G minus 1. So L of him is equal to 1 minus G plus his degree, so his degree is actually equal to 2g minus 1, and uh, we do the sum and we discover that this is g. Right? 
So this one, this one was uh, had strict inequality, and this one has equality. Right. So the divide, the degree went up by one here, and the degree doesn't, uh, and the uh, the degree goes up by one. But on the other hand, this one here was already uh, was already su su uh, superabundant. Right. So, um, so what does this mean? This means I've got this special divisor with K C, with the property that L of K C and L of K C plus P that this is equals. This is uh, this is equals for all P. Right. So, so I, you know, I've been playing this game the whole time. I'm going from D, I'm going from D minus P up to D. I'm adding one point to a divisor. And one of two things happens. And so far we've just said, well, one of the two things happens and I can't predict which. Right? But there is exactly one place here, namely standing at the canonical class, where, um, where I get this. So I'll explain, uh, when, I get, when, when I get round to it, I'll explain that this is to do with the Cauchy, in complex analysis, this is the Cauchy integral theorem. This is saying that uh, I can't have uh, an analytic function, an analytic, a holomor I can't have a meromorphic differential having a single pole of order one because the, the integral around it would have, have to have residue mm -hmm. zero, which means it doesn't have a pole at all. Right? But I'm not, I'm not talking about the facts. I'm, I, I'm not really worried about the fact or how we're going to prove this fact. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm worried about how we're going to use it. So, uh, so this implies This implies the, the rest of the Riemann, the rest of Riemann row, namely for all for all divisors d, l of d minus l of k c minus d equals one minus g plus degree d. So in other words, uh, you know, I uh, we have this inequality. L of d is greater than or equal to this. Right? And the, the, uh, the fact of the matter is that this L of D is strictly greater if and only if this divisor D is under KC. Right? So this is sketched out on one of the worksheets. Sketched on the homework sheet. And I hope that you've at least thought about it. So, so what do we have to do to prove this? What do we have to do to prove this? So I'm going to say um, I've got zero and I've got KC. And I'm going to have various divisors here, D in between. So I'm going to, if D is, if D is effective and KC minus D is effective. So, so if, this is uh, just one of, the, one of the cases we have to consider. This means that D is P1 plus PD, and this one here is, uh, you know, uh, whatever's, whatever's le left, it's maybe Q1 plus, plus Q, 2G minus 2 minus D. Right, I'm, uh, I, uh, I haven't prepared the notation here, so uh, maybe it might, be, it might be better to take these to be the same. Maybe it might be better to take this P1, PD plus 1, PD plus 2, P 2G minus 2. So let's consider, let's consider L of um, P1 plus, plus PI contained in L of P1 plus plus PI 
plus one. Right, so there's only one idea here. This is either this is either equality, either equals or increases by one. So I start I can start off from the device of zero and I can go up to the device of KC. Right. At zero, we know that L of zero equals one. When I get to KC, I know that L of KC equals G. So I'm making these steps here. I add P1, and then I add P1 plus P2, and then I add P3, and so on. I'm making a total of 2G minus 2 steps to go from, to go from zero up to KC. At each step, either I have equality or I have an increase by 1. And in total, I have an increase by g minus 1. So there must be exactly g minus 1 steps at which uh, the, this increases, at which uh, um, it increases by one. Yes. So what? So the point is, I can do exactly the same, going doing from going from uh, zero up to k. C minus D going up to KC. I can do exactly the same thing. So I can think of this as being adding uh, um, what, what I want to do. So I want to do uh, and now I'm going to add the points, the same points, but just in the opposite order. 2G minus 2 and then P 2G minus 2 plus P 2G minus 1 and so on. Right. So I'm doing, I'm doing a, a different ladder, which also goes from zero all the way up to KC. So in the first ladder, I had things like, I had things like D and then D plus P D plus 1, this was a step. In the second ladder I'm going to have KC minus D and then KC minus D plus P and it's the same, uh, what do I say? I'm sorry. So I hope I've uh, hope I've got this more or less right. Right. So so eventually here, here I'll get uh, the, the typical step here. The, this guy here is Kc minus d. So he's p d plus one plus plus p d. So what can we say about these two steps? So, uh, you know, I go here, and this was the argument I already had. So either I have equality or I increase by one. I ask exactly the same question here. What happens? Either equality or I increase by one. The point, however, it's not possible that these both increase by one.
right? Why not? Because if so, if so, I have an, an I have an element f in L of d plus p d plus one with uh, so so you know not contained in L of d and a, and, a, and a section f and a section g in L of k c minus d which is not contained in k c uh, minus d minus p. D plus one. Yeah, so what happens if I take this product fg? Then this is in L of kc plus p d plus one and it's not in L of kc. Right? Because uh, the condition here is saying that this L, this F has exactly the right valuation at this point d plus 1. So it's n it doesn't have, uh, it's not an element of there that actually has a zero, an extra 0 at the point p d plus 1 and so lives here. Right? And then the same with G. The same G. G, G has exactly the stated pole at the point p d plus 1, not 1 less. And so if I take the product here, it means the product li lies in, uh, in there, and this is a contradiction. Yeah, and so uh, you know, you take this, and then you uh, you think you think about it a little bit carefully. So you know, this ladder has exactly g minus one steps, and this ladder has exactly g minus one steps. Uh, so, so sorry, this this ladder has. 2 g minus 2 steps, and exactly one g minus 1 of them has to go up. In the se second ladder, it also exactly g minus 1 has to go up. And so the, uh, the conclusion is, the conclusion is that uh, uh, So not both of uh, LD in L of D plus P and L of KC minus P not, not both of them can increase. Right, and then second, uh, but one of them must increase. Right, one of them must increase because of the two two g minus two steps uh, in the first ladder. Uh, G minus one must increase. Well, so, so you know this is a tricky argument, but it's just combinatorics, right? When I go when I go up from zero up to KC, there are two G minus two steps because the degree of KC is two G minus two, and I'm going up from L of zero being one to L of zero being G. So exactly g minus one of these has to be an increase. And in the second ladder, exactly the same thing happens. Right? On the other hand, it's forbidden for them both to increase. And so therefore, the thing that's happening here is that, so, L, the conclusion, is that L of D uh, equals L of D plus P if and only if L of uh, Kc minus D minus P is not equal to L of Kc minus D. Okay, and from this you can prove the rest. The full form. 
So I, I, I put this on the example, on the example sheet, uh, 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 you know, because it is really clearer for you to think about it for yourself. You know, you can listen to me talking about it, but I can get muddled up and uh, confusing. <coughs> so you have to work. You have to work this out. Uh, you have to work this out for yourself on the on the example sheet. But it's basically straightforward. So uh, this last part, there exists, so the main, there exists a divisor with, and <coughs> so, uh, you know, finally I have to start telling you what all of this is about. So there is this divisor of a canonical class. So I'm, uh, I, uh, you know, there are, there are several different ways of proving this. And, um, you know, they're all interesting in different ways. I'm going to do the easy thing, which is just to give you an example. So, example. So, let me say, uh, let, let, let me, there's three or four different ways of proving this, and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get around to doing one. So, suppose C is non-singular CD in P2. Then I claim that KC, then I, I claim that genus is uh, D minus 1 choose 2. And that uh, KC is uh, uh, g minus 3 times h, right? So um, h is the divisor of x naught. <coughs> right, so first, the first thing to check is, uh, so what is this... Uh, uh, what's the degree? So this is uh, g minus, I'm sorry, d minus 3. Now this is d minus 3 times d. Right? And if you think about this, this is 2g minus 2. So, you know, you calculate this, it's d, minus, d squared minus 3 d plus 2 over 2. <coughs> so if I do d minus 3d, then that's 2g minus 2. Right, and what about L of kc? So this is L of d minus 3d h. So I'm, I'm going to prove a little thing about, uh, about these linear, so this being the same thing as uh, k p2, k homogeneous of p2 in degree d minus 3. I'm going to prove a little thing about uh, 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 say, saying that something like this is true slightly more generally. Right? This is not the definition. The, the, uh, these guys, I explained, these guys provide elements in here. They provide the right number of elements in here. But a, a priori, it's, it, it might be possible that we get slightly more here. But anyway, this guy here is, um, uh, if you calculate this, this is d minus 1 choose 2. Right? This is just counting monomials in, uh, of degree d minus 3 in the, in the projective space. Right? So what still has to be proved? Well, I have to prove this. So uh, I'm, I, I'm telling you, uh, the curve CD in, P, in P2, then it has such and such a, a degree. I, 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 if I define the canonical class like this, then it has the right, it has degree which is, uh, you know, 2G minus 2, where G is this number, and it has the L. But it doesn't, I haven't proved to you that it agrees with the G I defined earlier. So, so far G, G is defined as that max, in the, uh, the maximum constant in that uh, inequality. 
Right. <coughs> so the thing to prove is that uh, is that L of well, the thing I want to prove is that L of a a h. Uh, this is. L L C C is my C D here. A H. H is the hyperplane divisor. This is um, is equal to this K P two homoge K homogeneous P two in degree A. And this is now for all a greater than zero. This is not obvious. This is not a definition, and and also that L of <coughs> um, d minus three, so the same C D, d minus three h plus p, is equal to L of C D d minus three h for all p and c. <coughs> so uh, why is this good for me? <coughs> so this proves, so if I apply this with a very large, this implies that, uh, <coughs> that uh, L of a h, so that uh, L of a h is uh, a plus 2 choose 2 minus a minus d plus 2 choose 2. Right, so this is just the usual, this is just the usual thing that I had, the, uh, hey, this is good. <coughs> So I'm taking, uh, I'm taking polynomials of degree A, of which there are that number, and then I'm dividing them out by the multiples of D, uh, the multiples of CD, which is this number. Right? And so uh, we ca let's calculate this number. This is A squared plus 3A plus 2 divided by 2, and then minus here. So it's A minus D squared plus 3A minus D plus 2 divided by 2. Right, and what do we get? Uh, so we, the lot, various terms cancel here. There's a term that cancels there. There's a term that cancels there. If we do the calculation carefully, we're going to get uh, so a minus d all squared. There's a two ad in there, which is not here. So this is ad. It's, uh, there's a a minus d all squared. There's a minus two ad in there. This gets divided by two and then there. So this becomes AD. And then what's left? Well, the thing that's left is um, uh, uh, there's the D squared terms, and there's minus 3 and D here. So th this is uh, um, minus, uh, what is it? D squared minus 3D over 2 or something. Right, and this is 1 minus G plus degree. Maybe. Right, so this says there's a family of divisors here of degree as large as you like where I have equality in this riemann roch statement. And that, that, that nails down the G. This G couldn't be larger or smaller because, uh, because of this. And this also nails down the, this also nails down exactly the genus. So uh, how do we prove these uh, statements? <laughs> S 
So uh, I, I want to say, so if I take f in, I, I think I want to take f in uh, L of d minus 3 h plus p. Right, so this is the, this is the kc plus p. <coughs> So uh, the the f is of the form g m over h f. <coughs> so uh, where am I? So I've chosen x naught there. I've chosen the point p there. I want to choose x one. So I choose x naught. Uh, general line. So d d h is the divisor of x naught, and the uh, and x one is a line through p, and let's say not tangent to p, not tangent to c. Right. So the the thing I'm the thing I'm after is these points here. So there's d d minus one of those points. <coughs> uh, or there's a device of degree d minus one on the curve there. So then I'm going to say that uh, the divisor of gm over hm plus uh, 3 d minus 3 times the divisor of x naught plus p is greater than or equal to 0. Oh dear. So this means when I take uh, so, I can simplify this by just taking this inside there. Right, so I can take g m x naught to the power of d minus 3 divided by h m. And then there's plus p. Uh, so, sorry, the divisor of this plus p is greater than 0. So I'm probably going to have to leave this to next time. I was hoping to finish this today. Um, so as far as C is concerned, on C, the GM x naught cubed, x naught d minus 3, uh, has and then plus p that's uh, sorry has a, a divisor of zeros and if I do this plus p then this is greater than or equal to the divisor of zeros divisor of uh, hm So uh, the thing, the thing I'm claiming is that then um, GM times x naught, the d minus three times x one.
so so the x1 here is uh, is um, is killing this so, so, so I'm allowed a pole here, P. This x1 here has a zero at P. Right? So this is a, this is a regular, this is a, this is a form on P2 of degree uh, M plus D minus 2. Right? And it's... Uh, it's uh, it belongs it locally at each zero of H M intersect C. It has uh, it has divisor it has divisor greater than or equal to this, this divisor, divisor of HM, not C. And so, uh, uh, well here's my P2, here I've got so the C, here I've got uh, some, uh, the G is marking out some divisor like this. This is uh, some common locus of zeros. And so I'm thinking about the ideal G, uh, sorry, HM. I'm thinking about the ideal H, the ideal HM comma C. Right, and the, the point is that this GM times X naught the D minus 3 times X1 vanishes on each of these locuses. And so, and so therefore, this belongs to HM plus C. So ideal of a polynomial. Right. Uh, so anyway, let me, I'll, uh, I'll continue this next time, of course, but let me just write out the, the let me say the punchline, the, uh, the conclusion. So I do x naught d minus 3 times x1. So this has got to be of the form A times hm plus B times C. Right? The m and the m are the same, so this A is degree d minus 2, and the and this is of degree um, this is of degree d, so this one's of degree m uh, m minus two. Okay. So this polynomial A. So 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 log considering. It starts off being a rational function. This is a rational function on C. I write him in the form GM divided by HM. Some M is large, I don't care. Right? And then I find that GM, and then I times this by the zeros, by the allowed poles. I, t I times him also by X1 to get to have another pole. I find that this thing here, at every point, at every local point of the plane, belongs to the ideal of this, uh, of this intersection, H, M, and C. So the conclusion is that globally, this, uh, this, this form here, this form on projective space, is in the ideal generated by these two, these two guys. So we know it locally, and we know it, we deduce it globally. Right? However, I pointed out that this line X1 meets the curve at the point P, and it also meets it at these other d minus 1 points. So, this A here, A must vanish at d minus 1 points of the line X1. Yes? 
And so this is a, a is a form of degree d minus 2, and he's forced to vanish at d minus 1 points. And so, in fact, the a is divisible by x1. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, this is a mess. So x1 divides a. And then uh, this, this, uh, this, proves the, uh, this proves the statement. Okay, um, I'm sorry, I slightly got confused. I don't know if we're invited to this party. <laughs>